Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Dan from DHTV and today we're continuing the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus video series. If you've missed any of the previous videos, there is a link in the description. You can check that out for yourself. But in today's video, I'm going to be going through the new 3D touch feature and give you guys a full tutorial and how it works. Let's get started. So for those of you who don't know what 3D touch is, it's very simple. It's just basically putting force on the screen. So rather than just touching and holding on various things, by giving it force, you'll bring up other settings and other abilities. So let's take a look at some quick access features built into the stock applications on the iPhone. First, if we use 3D Touch on the camera app, so giving it pressure, it'll bring up these extra settings or quick settings. And you can see, take a selfie, record a video, slow-mo, or take a photo. And if you select any of them, it'll just go ahead and open it up in the application. Now, many of the stock apps have these abilities, some don't. And as developers build more apps that use this, you'll find that it's available more frequently. So again, let's just take a look at the clock app. You can create an alarm. You can go to your calendars app and add an event. And you can try this out with various different applications. Now, if it doesn't work, for example, the health app, if you press and it doesn't do anything, you're going to feel a vibration through the device. And that's basically all that's going to happen. You can still delete applications the same way. You just don't give it pressure. Just hold your finger on there and you'll see they'll start shaking and you can delete the ones that are available to delete. So those are the quick access features. Now let's take a look at some of the features built into the applications themselves. So let's open up the phone app here. And you can see I'm in the recent tab and I have one caller here. Now to take a quick peek at what you can do here, you can just use 3D Touch on the contact. You'll be able to see their name, call them or message them. Or if you have other features that are available, they may show up as well. If we take a look at the voicemail section here, you can do the same thing on your voicemails. And this way you've got a little bit more features and abilities you can do. You can create the contact, add to an existing contact message call, and then you've got the information up top. Moving to messages, you also have some features. So you can see I have one message here. It's a test message I just created. But if you use the 3D touch, so by pressing with some force, you'll be able to take a peek at the message and see it. Now, if you swipe upwards, you'll be able to hold it in that peek mode and you'll have some abilities at the bottom to depending on where you're peeking. Once you're done, you can just swipe out of it and it'll end. Now, if you wanted to reply, once again, from this stage here, tap that reply and it'll open up the message and you can send it. Now, similarly, if we open the mail app, we can do the same thing. We can take a quick peek at emails without having them show up as read. So this is just a junk folder in a random email account. So if we just go and use 3D touch by giving it some force, we can take a peek at the message. If we swipe upwards, we'll be able to access some of these abilities here as well as read the message. Now, this is going to save you a little bit of time. So you can take a quick peek at the email and if you don't need it or don't need Need to urgently reply to it now you can just swipe downwards and it still shows up as not read. The peak ability also works in the photos app you can just open it up if you open up your photos and give it some force touch here you can see the photo get a quick peek of it swipe upwards and you'll have your settings. The best thing to do is just to try this out in different applications but that's basically how 3D touch works with the peak ability. Now 3D Touch also works with Safari. So if we open up Safari and we're just on any website, for example, we're just on the Apple website. So let's say you wanted to click a link. Now this is a link right here, it says learn more. If you use 3D Touch on that link, you can get a quick look at the page you're about to go to. Again, you can swipe up, you can read a little snippet of the page, and then you can access some of the settings. So if you wanted to open it in a new tab, add it to your reading list, copy it, or if it's not what you thought it was going to be, just swipe downwards and you're back to where you started. Now one feature here that's pretty cool is the live photos feature and this is the ability to see what happened before the photo and after the photo. So once you've taken a photo, if you just use 3D touch on the photo, you'll be able to see some movement there. So you can see what I've done before, just like about a second to a second and a half and what I've done after for that same amount of time. It's pretty cool how that looks and you can imagine how this will look with different photos, especially some nice water scenes or sunsets and things like that. I think it's a little gimmicky, but it is kind of cool. Another feature with 3D Touch is the ability to access our multitask feature without having to double click the home button. So what you would do is use 3D Touch on the left side and just drag to the right and it'll open up your multitask feature. So that's pretty much how 3D Touch works. You're just giving a little bit of pressure to different applications, different areas to access quick features, 
different settings and different abilities. Now you could try this out for yourself in different applications and in different areas of the device to see if you can find some other features that I didn't mention here. If you'd like to post what you like to use 3D Touch for in the comment box down below, that would be great and it would help other people find different features as well. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel as I'll be posting more videos on the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus. If you have any questions, feel free to ask and I'll see you guys in the next one.